i.e. what we did was we pre-recorded a debate between uh, Dr. Andrew Wakefield and another expert based at Oxford University, David Robert Grimes, uh, about the movie and the content and the work that Dr. Wakefield did back in the 90s. I'll bring you that. After. Here is some audio from a trailer to this movie, Vaxxed. You and I don't know each other very well. You have a son with autism, and I have great shame now. There's a whistleblower from the CDC who's going to come out and say that the CDC had committed fraud on the MMR study and that they knew that vaccines were actually causing autism. The CDC had known all along there was this MMR autism risk. Oh my God, I cannot believe we did what we did. Um, but we did. Omission of crucial data, destruction of documents, misleading the Congress, grievous harm to innocent children. Everything I've been telling my patients for the last 10 years has been based on a lie. That's an extract from the trailer, the audio of the video trailer to Andrew Wakefield, based now in the USA. I spoke to him yesterday about the movie. We pre-recorded it because of time differences and availability and all that. I also spoke to David Robert Grimes. He's a physicist and a cancer researcher. He's an Irishman. He's based at Oxford University in the UK. We've spoken, in fact, to, um, to David before on the show. So I'm going to let you hear that discussion now. It goes to a point and then ends. And we'll start with uh, Dr. Andrew Wakefield. You're back in the headlines, I think, because of the, the movie Vaxxed, which we haven't seen in the cinemas yet here in Ireland. It's quite difficult to see a copy of it. Very controversial material. Some people have said we shouldn't see this movie. Why should we see this movie? Well, because it brings, for the first time in 20 years, it brings the truth to the table. It brings the truth from a senior scientist from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in America saying that they have investigated the link between vaccines and autism, MMR vaccines specifically, and they have found, they have confirmed that there is a very strong statistical association between exposure to this vaccine on schedule, that's 12 to 18 months, and autism risk. And the film is available online now, so you can stream it and you can watch it in Ireland and around the world. Why do you think there's been such resistance to, to showing it publicly? I think that people are terrified. The authorities, the drug companies are terrified of this film. Academics are terrified of it. It's, firstly, number one, it's impossible to comment on it unless you've seen it. You're speaking, if you haven't seen it, then you're speaking from a position of ignorance, and that's not a good position. I'm not putting you in that bracket because you're simply uh, here to discuss the movie. But um, it is absolutely essential that people see this film before mm. passing comment. Well, well I'm familiar with the your film. work, Dr. Wakefield, uh, which gives me some start, I guess. I admit I haven't seen it, but uh, David Robert Grimes, who I'll bring in momentarily, has, has seen it and will have, be able to analyse it perhaps better than I. But I do remember your work, and I do remember the, the link that you, you said was there in, in 1998. But I also remember the way that was taken apart and dismantled by the various medical authorities and, and, and how you yourself were discredited. And, and the research was pretty much thrashed over the years. What has changed now that, that, that allows you to stand over the film? Well, the fact is that the research was solid and uh, honest right from the very beginning. What you've witnessed, I'm afraid, is an extensive and extravagant public relations exercise to discredit vaccine safety research, and that's what it was. It wasn't anti-vaccine, it was vaccine safety research, but it offended government policy and it offended pharmaceutical industry profit, and therefore it had to be completely discredited and the messenger destroyed. It's a fact of life. It's just ruthless pragmatism. If that's what you do to my bottom line, that's what I'm going to do to your career. That's what happens in medicine all the time. So the thing about this confession from a senior CDC scientist is it confirms that the parents and we were right all along. At that point, it might be a good opportunity to bring in David Robert Grimes uh, from Oxford University. David, good morning and welcome to you. Good morning, PJ. How are you doing? Now, you've had an opportunity to listen 
to pro- I have. Uh, Dr. Wakefield I have and, and maybe respond. Let's go back to, to the original paper in 1998. You've read that. You yourself Absolutely. have discounted it. You yourself use it as a lecture tool in your own lectures in university. So start from there. Uh, yeah, I'd like to start by giving your listeners some background on Mr. Wakefield's claim. Back in 1998, he published a paper alleging a link between vaccination and autism, making this insinuation in the media. Now, despite the lack of reproducible evidence, the story panicked many parents who refused to get their children vaccinated. What happened next is now infamous. Measles, for example, is incredibly virulent and can even be fatal, and each single case typically leads to 12 or to 18 other cases. With falling vaccine uptake, hundreds of children fell ill. In Dublin, we even had a number die. But the claim Wakefield was pushing then and now was shown to be utterly fraudulent, buttressed by falsified data and involving unethical experiments on developmentally impaired children. Frankly, it's borderline unethical. This man continues to get a platform to scaremonger so dangerously. Well, we're giving him a platform today because the movie's in the news. You have an opportunity. You have seen it. Absolutely, I have seen it, yes. And your thoughts? My thoughts are, I I think there is something horrendously hypocritical about the accusations of conspiracy as as, as a way of buttressing Mr. Wakefield's narrative, given that the only person who's committed any conspiracy and was shown to was Mr. Wakefield, who falsified data and had undeclared financial interests in the result of that data. So for him to sit here and tell us the entire medical and scientific community is wrong and to present himself as some sort of Galileo-like figure is is so intellectually vapid and insulting and dangerous that I I simply find it difficult to to comprehend it. Dr. Wakefield, Andrew Wakefield, your response to any of that? Well, there are so many errors, so much hypocrisy, so a pre-prepared script read by effectively a mouthpiece for what sounds like a pharmaceutical industry advertisement. It's really, really sad. Firstly, Mr. Wakefield, I'm a physicist. I am not Can a pharmaceutical just person. Let me finish. Firstly, the, the English High Court heard the case against the, the GMC and completely, utterly threw it out, exonerating my colleague, Professor Walker Smith, who was funded to appeal. There was nothing unethical about the study. There was no declared conflict of interest. This was all known. And what there certainly was. Know, what you dropped your legal case against, against Brian Deere because of that. Mr. Wakefield, your Let actions since 1998 here. have been Would deplorable. You, you are in a large part responsible for the fall in vaccination rate, the mass outbreaks of no, measles that not. today you blight Europe and America. Directly or indirectly, this is your legacy and the vaccine. blood is on your hands, sir. The government withdrew the opportunity... Don't blame the government for your actions, sir. And that's when measles came back. And if you're going to keep interrupting then you're depriving the public of the certain knowledge that the CDC have committed. The public to had ample okay, opportunity. David, the only thing I do, David, just, just, just pause for a moment, David, and let him finish what he's saying, and then I will bring you back and give you adequate time, and I'll ask uh, Dr. Wakefield to let you do that too. Off you go, Andrew Wakefield. I did not interrupt your guest once during his... Okay, well, I think, we dealt with, I think we may have dealt with that now. He's going to wait until you finish. No, no, but the, point, the very point is that his strategy is to simply block people hearing about the truth. This interview is about the worst fraud in the medical of, in, in the med, history of medicine committed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the words of their own senior scientists who not only designed the study, but if this were a money laundering ring, he would have been the accountant. He had the data, the information, the uh, analysis plans, and he gave them all to us. He admitted to fraud. I have never admitted to fraud because your listeners must realize I have never committed fraud. It was a fix. Now, I'll, I'll let David Robert Rangel so back in. I'll ask your, if you're, if you're the British honest, Medical Journal has fraud. called you a fraud, Mr. Wakefield. Brian Deere won an investigative journalist award for exposing you as a charlatan of the highest order. Now, the fact you can sit there and laugh, and you will have an adoring audience, but I want to make it really clear to listeners listening to the show that you are not a truth teller. You are not a hero. You are not a martyr. You're not even misguided like the excuse that so many people have. You know full well what you are doing, and you are exploiting people, and ultimately, you are damaging lives. And you can sit there and say this is a big cover-up and a big conspiracy, and you can make that claim all you like, and you know... And it's intellectually vapid and entirely empty. David, can I put one question to you? Can I put one question to you, David? If there is genuinely a whistleblower, a senior scientist within CDC, and 
could there, is there any possibility, do you believe at all, David, that there is some kind of a, there was a cover-up within CDC? Do you believe well, Mr. that? Wakefield, yes, well, listen to me here. What Mr. Wakefield may not be aware of is that I actually also do research conspiracy theories. And I can tell you straight off the bat that a CDC WHO conspiracy would need at least 50, 25 to 50,000 active collaborators. Now, you'd have to insinuate that 25 to 50,000 doctors, researchers, medics, people you meet, people who treat you, are actively conspiring, or, or the other alternative is that Mr. Wakefield's narrative, which has already been shown to be a lie, is a lie. I am much more likely to believe that one person is lying than 50,000 people who work in medicine this, every day are lying. Where do you pull that number from? It took five people to conspire to, to produce fraudulent data in this. The way I pull that number from, Mr. Wakefield, is a paper I published in January on the mathematics of... Well, you ask him a question, you know, Andrew Wakefield, let him answer, yeah? Where do you get the numbers? I, I believe the number of the people involved with CCWHO was in a paper that I did earlier on this year when I worked out how many people would have to be involved. So that's available on Plus One. And well, that, that wasn't worth attracted. the paper it was written on then, because it took five PA people to conspire to produce this result. You, you are claiming a mass conspiracy. You are claiming that worldwide medics and scientists are lying to the public. No, I'm the not. The much more I'm likely outcome is that I've you are. I've never said that in my life. Absolute nonsense. The conspiracy so is you're claiming the CDC are lying. These are the words of William Thompson, a scientist at the CDC. They're not mine. He said we committed... DJ, with the greatest respect, this is a waste of time. No, you're a waste of time. You're a waste of time because you're just setting out to deceive the public based upon rhetoric... Thank you for your time, DJ. ...proven wrong a long, long time ago.